Now we're going to take a little bit of a look at addition reactions to conjugated dienes. Now, we explored a whole host of addition reactions for regular old alkenes, and we'll find out with conjugated systems it's a little more complicated than that. Um, but if you recall, like the addition of HBr here, it adds an H and a Br, it adds at Markovnikov, so generally, you know, the H on the less substitute side, the bromine on the more substitute side. It does go through a carbocat intermediate, so there were chances for rearrangements and stuff. Uh, with a conjugated system, though, it's going to be a little more complicated, and generally, we're just going to have you look at adding one equivalent. With only adding one equivalent, only one of the pi bonds is going to get to react. And so the first thing that I figured out is, you know, which pi bond reacts and why and things of a sort, and we'll find out that usually you can predict different products, and even if we change the conditions, we might even choose a different product depending on the conditions. So it's a little bit complicated here and stuff like that. So first thing to look at is just a reminder of the mechanism here. And so one of the pi bonds is going to come and attack H. That breaks the bond between H and Br, and we'll add the H. And so in this case, I've got two options. With this pi bond attacking, I could add the H on the less substitute side, or I could add the H on the more substitute side. If I add it on the less substitute side, I get the carbocation on the more substitute side. If I add the H on the less substitute side, I get the carbocation on the less substitute side. So that's one option. The other option, and I'm just going to draw another molecule of HBr in here to use, is we could have the other pi bond be the one attacking HBr instead. And so if this pi bond was the one attacking, then we'd attack an H uh, and put it either on the less substitute side, leaving us with the more substitute carbocation, or putting the H on the more substitute side, leaving us with the less substitute carbocation. And so the big difference here is that we've got carbocations in four different places. So and we'd have to decide which one's more stable and stuff like that. It's even more complicated than that because two of these carbocations are allylic and are going to be stabilized by resonance. So in this case, we could also draw this resonance structure for this carbocation. So, and then this one's also allylic and it's going to be stabilized by resonance. Cool. And now we're going to predict some products here based on these different carbocations. So, if we kind of take a look, if bromine adds where that carbocation is, so, and again, obviously we could assume rearrangements and stuff like that. So, but if we do it where the carbocation is, uh, at least in the resonance stabilized ones, we can come up with some things. So that plus charge is shared between two locations. It's shared here, so the bromine could end up there. It's also shared here, so bromine could end up there. And so we get two possible products from that one. And again, this one's resonance stabilized as well. And so the bromine could add here. Or the bromine could add here. And so again, two possible products. So, and it turns out, because the resonance stabilized cations are more stable than the ones that aren't, we don't even have to consider these. The major synthetic route is not going to be through those two at all. Uh, so we'll find out in the next slide. The first thing you got to do is figure out which of the four carbocations that could form, which is going to be the major synthetic route. Well, we've already ruled out two. Let's take a little bit deeper look at these two resonance stabilized cations. So again, let's take a deeper look at those two resonance stabilized carbocations. Uh, so it turns out uh, they're not equally stable in this case, and so one's going to be preferred over the other. And, uh, it turns out whichever one is more stable, that's where the major products are going to be formed. We might get some, uh, you know, a little bit of minor products formed from the other one, but we just won't even consider them in this case. Uh, so in this case, we have to look at what carbon is actually sharing the carbocation. So this one's shared on a tertiary carbon and a primary carbon. This one, the positive charge is shared between a secondary carbon and a primary carbon. If you call it the more substituted carbocation is more stable. So in this case, sharing the positive charge between a tertiary and a primary is more stable than sharing it between a secondary and a primary. And so we won't even consider this. We might form some minor products off those, but the major synthetic route is through this most stable carbocation. So out of the four possible carbocations now, we've now reduced it down to the most stable one. And so again, we said that the bromine could attack either one of the carbons that are sharing the positive charge. And that's why we're going to get possibly two products here. This guy here, and then adding the bromine here. So, and these are your two possible products. And the question is, how do we distinguish between them? Well, I'm going to draw that hydrogen back on for a second. So that hydrogen is there versus there. We'll find out we give some names here. When the H and the Br add to two adjacent carbons, we call that the 1, 2 product, or the result of 1, 2 addition. So, but here it's carbon 1, 2, 3, and 4. So now they're 4 apart, and so we'd call this the 1, 4 product, or the product of 1, 4 addition. So and it turns out they both have a chance of being the major product, depending on the conditions. 
So again, here I've drawn out the 1-2 product and the 1-4 product. Looks a little prettier than on my last slide. Uh, but in this case, the question is how do you decide which is the major? Well, again, it all depends on the conditions, but we have names for these. So first of all, we can just look and say which is the more stable product. So which of these is more stable? And usually we're talking about energy of electrons. So if we look, what's the highest energy electrons on either one of these molecules? Well, it turns out that's probably going to be the non-bonding electrons on the bromine. So, and for non-bonding electrons on bromine, there's no rule. It's not like, you know, tertiary halide bromines or tertiary bromines are, you know, the lone pairs are higher energy than secondary or primary. There's no rule for this. And for all intents and purposes, they're roughly equal. So then the question is, what's the next highest electrons? Well, we don't have any more non-bonding electrons, so it has to be bonding electrons. And you're supposed to know uh, that pi electrons are higher in energy than sigma electrons. And so the next highest energy electrons are the pi electrons in the alkene. And so the question really becomes then, if I want the most stable product, it's whichever one has the more stable pi electrons. Well, we learned in, that, you know, uh, trans is more stable than cis, and we also learned that a more substituted pi bond is more stable than a less substituted pi bond. So if we, we look at the one on the left here, it's bonded to two hydrons, a third hydron there, and a carbon. That's just mono substituted. And the one on the right here, carbon there, carbon there, carbon there, and then one hydron. So three out of four positions are carbons. So that is tri-substituted. And so the one on the right is the more stable product, and we have a name for that. We call that the thermodynamic product. And so generally the way this works in addition reactions to conjugated systems, whichever product, and you usually come down to two, whichever one has the more substituted pi bond is the more stable product and is therefore the thermodynamic product. And we'll find out in a second here that it's favored at high temperatures, the thermodynamic product. Okay, so let's take a look at the other one here. So the other product turns out we have a name for is called the kinetic product. And the kinetic product is whichever one forms faster. So, and to figure out which one forms faster, you don't want to look at the product itself, you want to look at the mechanism in which it's produced. Because you want to know which one has the lower activation energy. Well, to have the lower activation energy, you're looking at a lower transition state and stuff like this. And so if we look here, it all comes down to the two carbons that are sharing the positive charge, those two right there. And so bromine's sitting here, the bromide ion anyways, and he's saying, which one do I attack? Well, it turns out the lowest activation energy it's going to have is whichever attacking whichever one has more of the positive charge. Well, between the two resonance structures, the one on the left, where again, the positive charge is being shared between a tertiary and a primary carbon, the one on the left is the more stable resonance contributor, and therefore the resonance hybrid resembles it more. And therefore, the partial positive charge on that tertiary carbon is greater than the partial positive charge on that primary. And so therefore, bromine attacking that tertiary carbon will have a lower activation energy than if bromine had attacked the primary carbon. And so wherever attacking that tertiary carbon leads, and that's this product, is the kinetic product. So notice when we talk about thermodynamics, we talk about things like delta G, delta H, and delta S, which are state functions. And it doesn't matter what pathway you take, they're path independent. And we just had to look at the two products and figure out which one was better. But kinetics is all about the pathway, the lowest activation energy. And to figure out the best product here, I had to go back and look at the carbocation intermediate and talk about, you know, envision attacking in which place would have a lower activation energy. And so generally, look at your two resonance structures, whichever one is a more substituted carbocation resonance structure, wherever attacking there leads to is your kinetic product. Now, in this case, and as most of the time, your kinetic and your thermodynamic, thermodynamic product are two different products, but every once in a blue moon, they'll be the same product. Uh, but to get your kinetic product, it's going to be favored at low temperatures. So the kind of the way we look at this is then, you know, or at least I look at this, is if you have all the energy in the world, then by all means form the best product. So and that would be the thermodynamic product. And to have all the energy in the world, that means you're at high temperatures. However, if you don't have a lot of energy available, you're at low temperatures, then by all means just form the one with the lowest activation energy barrier. It's fastest. So, and that's why the kinetic product's favored at low temperatures. If we kind of diagram what a reaction coordinate diagram might look like here, so we'll do energy and we'll do the reaction coordinate. So, both of these have the same first step. We're going to form the same carbocation. So it's what happens from here that's going to be different. So we've got one of them with a higher activation energy, but that forms a lower energy product. And then we've got another one with a lower activation energy, but that forms a higher energy product. And so looking at the two product, this is your thermodynamic product because it's the lower energy product. So that doesn't automatically make the other one the kinetic product. You have to go back here and look at the activation energy here. And the activation energy leading to this product is lower, and that's what makes it 
the kinetic product. Now again, usually the thermodynamic product and the kinetic product are two different products, but every once in a blue moon they'll be the same and their diagram here would look a little different. So the lowest activation energy would also lead to the lowest overall energy product in that case. So just a quick review here. So your kinetic product, again, it's got your lowest activation energy, so which means it'll have the most stable transition state. And you really want to focus on the major resonance contributor for the carbocation intermediate. So and then also remember it's the major product at lower temperatures. Then you've got your thermodynamic product, and your thermodynamic product is just the most stable product, which usually means the most substitute alkene. And it's the major product at higher temperatures. So big things you need to remember in this context.